Hello, I hope you're doing well today. Um, I'm Grace Artistry and I'm going to show you a little bit about how I use color in acrylics. Um, I'm going to make a wash and just show you what that means and what it is. So I hope you enjoy this video. All right, so I'm going to create something called a wash and I'm using acrylic paint. Now, I did a darker background here so that you could really just see the white that uh, I'm gonna put on top. And the whole um, way that a wash works is that um, you're seeing through the color, you're looking at the white, and then it's kind of bouncing back at you. And I'll just show you what I mean here. So let's just create a bit of white on here. Uh, just pretend that it, this is a painting and this is uh, something that you want to make um, really colorful or stand out. All right, so we've got our white. Got to let that dry completely and then we can add our color. All right, there we go. So now I will show you what I mean by um, you see the color and you see the white underneath. So let's just choose a nice bright color. We'll choose some yellow. Now this is um, acrylic that does not have any white added to it. It's pure color and I made sure of that when I bought it. Uh, there we go. So it looks um, nice and pure on the um, butcher tray here. There. So you can see how nice and bright that is when I put it on, on the yellow. Now let's try something else where uh, I'll just show you the difference here. I will mix my yellow with my white and we'll see how bright that is compared to this. All right. And this is how a lot of people will make um, colors is that they'll just mix it uh, and put it on and that's it, that's their, that's their step. But I just don't think that it's as bright as it could be when it's like this. All right, we'll do a few layers to give it a chance. So we've got one layer on there and already you can see it's definitely not as bright and colorful as this one. Let's put another layer on there because I do have a dark color underneath so that's really shining through. All right, let's add a little more yellow just to see if we can make it as bright as this. Now we've got two layers on there and I want to be fair for this one and put another layer on that. Uh, one important thing that you need to remember is to keep your water pure. Okay? So I'm going to mix that white in there and my water's getting a little bit cloudy. <coughs> so I'll go grab some new water. I'll get two containers so that um, I don't have to keep going back to the sink. All right, so I've got my clean water. I'm gonna grab a little bit more pure yellow. I love these colors, they're so nice. And I want to water it down so that it's not so thick that I can't see the white behind it. Okay, so it's pretty watered down. It's so vibrant. 
when it's nice and thin and it's just a, a little layer. All right. So there, as you can see, this yellow is the one that's mixed with the white and this yellow uh, is the one that's on top of the white. And you can see that there's a big difference. I don't know how well it shows up on the camera. There, I brought it a little closer. And you can just see the, um, just the beautiful color in this one down here. And then how this one just looks kind of washed out like uh, it's been sun bleached. All right, now let's try, let's just try adding another color on top of that and see what happens. Now I'm mixing in my dirty water, my cloudy water, so that I can keep my, um, my other water nice and pure. All right, let's add some magenta. So again, there's no white added to this paint. It's just pure color, it's a pigment. Yeah. So this is how I create a lot of color in my paintings. Sometimes I'll just work with just white paint to make my details and then I don't have to think about the color and then I'll add the color on top of it like this. And let's try the experiment of mixing the magenta with the white. And you probably don't want to do washes absolutely everywhere. Maybe you do. I kind of do. <laughs> but you definitely don't have to. You can just save it for the spots that you want to be really colorful or bright. Yeah, these ones look more pastel. Pastel-y when I put them, when I mix it together. Well, we might as well continue with the colors and add some blue on there. Now I gotta let that dry or else it will not work. Uh, if I put the wash on top of that it's just gonna mix in. Now my blue is very muddy. It's kind of running out. So I did work on a painting yesterday and cleared a little spot for my pure blue but I don't think it's 100%. It's still got some white in it, so we'll just work with it. Alrighty. Blue's got to be my favorite color. That's probably why I don't have any left. So I did a whole sky like this for my last big painting. Um, did the did the light blue underneath, and then I did a big wash over top of all of it to just see if I could make it look very vibrant. And it worked quite nicely. Like um, it does look different from a lot of my other skies, so that was awesome to just try something new. But it was difficult because doing a wash over a large area. It's a little tricky because you have to do it all while it's still wet if you want it to look the same and not be patchy. And then you can't have too much water or else it'll um, just like bead up. But you can't have too little water or else it won't spread. So it was, it was kind of tricky and it's not perfect, but I think it looks, it, looked, it turned out in the end. 
So there you go. You can see the difference between that right there. Here, I'll go with this. Those colors there, which are still lovely colors. And then those colors there, they're quite different. So you can just make, um, you can make it work for you. And like I said, do some of this technique in some places and this technique in other places. And they don't have to be that bright and vibrant. Actually, let's let's do that right now. Let's uh, let's tone them down a little bit so that they're not so colorful. So let's say I'm working on like a leaf or something, and I want it to be I want it to look real and um, vibrant, but I don't want it to be super colorful. Then I'm gonna add. I'm just gonna mix these colors together. Right. So it toned it down a little bit. You could do shadows like that. And then let's stick with our uh, pattern of adding the white to it to see what that's going to make it look like. So I kind of just added all the colors together to make this brownie green color. So I'll do the same thing on this side. And you cannot see through this. This is opaque. Because it has white added to it, I can't tell what I did underneath it. So that's another thing with this technique is that you can add all kinds of detail and not be worried about covering it up when you add the color to it. Yeah, so that's the difference. Uh, and I'm going to show you kind of a practical example of what that looks like in an actual painting. Enjoy.
enjoyed that video and that clip of me painting. Uh, it's been fun just like experimenting and trying to make things look exactly the way I want them in a painting and, and trying to make things a little more colorful and vibrant and also a little bit more realistic. Um, when I'm painting like faces or um, just like anything really, I want them to look like they have layers to them and, and just look a little more three-dimensional. And I think that this, uh, this way of painting with doing washes really helps with that. So I hope that you can use this technique and let me know what you think about it. Thank you so much for watching.